welcome back to Free Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Secret Service Director Kimberly Cheadle has officially resigned after facing intense scrutiny following the attempted assassination of Donald Trump on July 13th. Yesterday, Congress grilled Cheadle at a public hearing. Here was Republican Nancy Mace not holding back. Is the Secret Service fully cooperating with our committee? Yes. Okay, you say you're fully cooperating with this committee. Um, on July 15th, this committee sent you a list of demands of information that we wanted. Has the Secret Service provided this committee a complete list of all law enforcement personnel that were there that day? Have you done that? Have you provided a list to the Oversight Committee? Yes or no? I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> that is a no. Have you provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee, as we asked on July 15th, yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That on is that. a no. You're full of shit today. You're just being completely dishonest. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. But Republicans were not the only ones to scrutinize Cheadle. Democratic Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez also grilled Cheadle over her agency's failure to protect Trump. Watch. So the idea that a report will be finalized in 60 days, let alone prior to any actionable uh, decisions that would be made, is simply not acceptable. It has been 10 days since an assassination attempt on a former president of the United States, regardless of party. There need to be answers. So I guess the one thing that Republicans and Democrats can agree on now is that they don't want to get shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good thing to agree on. Um, I was glad to see you know, the committee, uh, both Comer and Raskin, putting out a joint letter saying she needs to resign, absolutely. Um, the questioning from AOC was actually very good. Uh, I saw her getting a lot of uh, deserved praise from conservatives for asking qu actually specific questions about, about the gun, the AR-15, saying, well, if it has a range of 600 yards, then why would you consider the perimeter when, when Trump is speaking to, to not extend that far? If there's a building, <laughs> that somebody could be perched on within shooting distance of the podium, wouldn't, shouldn't the perimeter be expanded to include that? Um, the questions about why uh, the, the recordings have not been made available or were deleted. Um, you know, so much has now provably gone wrong with how the Secret Service handled that. Everything from them, you know, interacting with the shooter and not um, not taking the uh, the scope he had to help judge the distance. I mean, like they security. People don't let you just keep stuff that's at all threat. Like they'll they'll take the bubble gum out of your mouth if they feel like it. And then like that he was on their radar, wandered up onto the roof, spotted by bystanders, and at no point do they pull Trump from the stage or get him to duck down. It, and I know she wasn't like there on the day, but these are her agency's policies. It's incredible negligence. Exactly. She also tried to explain away the issue of the sloped roof on multiple That's occasions. That's my favorite one. She claimed that it was unsafe for agents to be on the sloped roof, yet they were on similarly sloped roofs with the counter sniper teams. And then she claimed that this specific building was under the purview of local law enforcement, which makes zero sense if you have counter snipers on pretty much every other roof in the vicinity of the stage. Yeah. But this one just happens to be relegated to local law enforcement, which doesn't have a counter sniper team. And there were reports that the Secret Service failed to meet with uh, the local law enforcement groups that were on the ground that day in a briefing prior to this event actually taking place. Watching her in this hearing, she was arrogant, she was dismissive, she was obstinate. I mean, really the opposite of everything that a public servant, especially one who is supposed to be dedicated to the public safety of our elected officials, should be. Um, I, I'm glad she resigned. It was obviously the right move, but it feels like too little too late. I mean, the only thing that saved her was the perhaps divine intervention of Trump moving his head a quarter of an inch at the last second. Yeah, I, I mean, he was almost assassinated. It's it's still it's still astonishing to me that this happened. I know it happened. It's 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 crazy how I mean to, he was to be nicked and not killed is it, it takes some kind of it, I see why people would some sort of supernatural explanation. He could have died so easily, and someone did die. It's not like no harm, no right. foul. He was minimally injured, thank goodness. But two people were more seriously wounded, and someone was killed. Someone was shot in the head and died in front of their family. So it, it's this. The errors uh, had a cost, someone died. Um, you, you know, law enforcement, security, we, we go through so much 
Patriot Act, TSA style stuff to keep us safe that is obnoxious and irritating and costly that seems to be, and even for what? For what good? Um, when things like this are still allowed to happen. You know, why do we have, e even for, you know, local police sometimes, think of Uvalde, think of the, the police standing outside the room where a mass shooter is locked in a room with children who are dying and screaming and bleeding and calling for help on their phone saying, we're still alive in here, and they're just sitting out there waiting, even though the training that all police have now in that situation is to rush the shooter, not to wait, not to negotiate, not to strategize, but to go in which I know takes a lot of bravery and we should be, you know, these are heroic people who sign up for this kind of line of work and then do the job, but they have to actually do the job. And I feel a little bit like that here. You know, these are brave people that we rely on, but, and then the, and then the American people end up getting blamed for, you know, missing the signs or the warning signs. But then we always find out that actually people did speak up. Right. Actually people said, this person is, look, Look at this deranged person or called ahead of time and said, I, this person in my family is ill and scary and I'm worried about them and nothing gets done, even when it's reported to law enforcement at like the highest levels. Yeah, I was uh, obviously out last week because I was at the convention in Milwaukee and it felt like such a cleanup job. So mm. immediately following the assassination attempt, they double the security perimeter. Um, they have the strictest limits on what you can bring into the actual convention. The trolleys, you were only allowed to have see-through plastic bags. There was sort of like an underground black market lighter trade inside of the security <laughs> perimeter. Of course, we're a bunch of Republicans at a convention. Like we want yeah. to smoke a cigarette. We need our nicotine. Yeah. And the they were Zins? just- were they letting Zins they in? They did let Zin in. Tell but Tucker there's... Carlson would have been on the, <laughs> no, on the floor. No, he was fine. Yeah. Uh, there was just this big box that one of our reporter took a photo of at the end of the convention of all of the lights lighters, vapes, e-cigarettes that were taken by Secret Service. And it was just frustrating to, to have this TSA level nonsense just a few days after they attempted the assassination. Obviously, you understand why they're doing it, but it's like yeah. you guys are taking it out on us, basically, that yeah. you failed at yeah. your basic that job. That you didn't alert the president that there was a man exactly. with an AR-15 on a roof, a sloped roof, and then, <laughs> a roof. And then you have a bunch of 5'4 women supposedly shielding oh, yeah. the 6'3 president. <laughs> like, how illogical can it get? This uh, this director who's now resigned is apparently a favorite of Dr. Jill Biden mm. and her closest aid and uh, I know people get all up in arms of calling people DEI hires, but yeah. I mean, if this woman was put in there because she's buddies with Dr. Jill and it looks nice to have a female face of the Secret Service, like, yeah, that's that's unacceptable. This is a position that should be 100% based yeah. on meritocracy. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, it is vital that our political figures who are targets for this kinds of things are fully safe and fully protected. And they still have, you know, her resigning is good, but they still have so many questions to answer about what went wrong so that we can have confidence that our political figures are protected. I mean, this was supposed to be enhanced security because they'd received an, like an Iranian based threat against Donald Trump that was totally unconnected, we think, to the, to the shooter. Um, and, you know, may have been nothing, but this was supposed to be enhanced security because of that. And it was still totally wholly inadequate. So they haven't even begun to, to answer the question. And there was another man just last week who was arrested for threatening to shoot Trump and I think some of his family members on some public forum. There were two individuals right outside of the convention perimeter who one was shot and killed because he had was wielding knives and the other one had like a scream mask and a gun. And I don't believe either of those were politically motivated. It was just sort of typical right. downtown Milwaukee stuff. But for that to even happen within a mile of the security perimeter is somewhat concerning. You have the supposedly tightest security that Milwaukee's probably ever had and you still can't escape the crime on the streets apparently, it's just outrageous. And this is what breeds conspiracy theories, is yes. that we cannot have trust in our institutions when they repeatedly lie to us and fail in such right, massive cause people, ways. Right, because people can't fathom screwing up this badly. Right. I mean, that's that's government work for you, right? That's uh, the, the kind of unaccountability that is often the result of having government structures where no one can be fired for anything. It breeds conspiracy theories. And we, like, we don't even know that this shooter was necessarily politically motivated. He also Googled like, Biden's location, he seems uh, to be one of those kinds of loner type yeah. people who was Random just looking for Random offshore bank accounts, like all yeah, kinds of weird so, dissonant things. But that, but political people, famous people are targets of 
both politically motivated would-be assassins and also just, you know, crazy people. So they need to be freaking protected. More free media in just a minute.